the coordinator has two hats. Uh, it used to be Federico Mogherini. Now uh, it is Joseph Borrell. Uh, he has two hats. Uh, one hat uh, is he's the high representative of the European Union for foreign defense policy. The other hat is the coordinator of the Joint Commission. He can put his hat as the coordinator of the joint position and sort of choreograph the actions that are needed to be uh, taken by the United States and the actions that are needed to be taken by Iran. Uh, Nagar Mortazavi is a columnist for The Independent. She joins me now from Washington, D.C. Hi, Nagar, it's good seeing you. Uh, so from what we just heard, we know Iran would like assistance from the EU, but does the U.S.? Well, I think that would be the only way forward for both sides. What we know for sure is that both Tehran and Washington intend to resume diplomacy. President Joe Biden has said when he was on a campaign trail, um, and some of his top advisors have said multiple times that they intend to return back to the JCPOA. And now that the team has gotten into the White House, we've heard uh, these comments from senior officials in the in the Biden administration. But we've so far in the past few days, we've heard this game of who goes first. We heard from Iranian leaders saying the U.S. should come back to the JCPOA first because technically they're the ones who left it. And the U.S. saying that Iran should comply with the JCPOA before we lift sanctions. I think what the Iranian foreign minister did today is clear up some of the confusion as far as who goes first, basically making it clear that they're uh, prepared to kind of go together instead of each waiting for the other one to go first. So while they play this game of who goes first, as you put it, reports are Iran could have enough fissile, uh, fissile material for a nuclear weapon in a few months, maybe even weeks. Is time running out for an agreement? I think time is running out, both when it comes to the nuclear program, but also politically, time is short, especially in Tehran, because the current administration of Hassan Rouhani and the Jawad Zarif team, the team that did make the JCPOA the agreement, is going to be in office for a few short months only. Iran is going to have a presidential election in June, and a new president will be coming after Hassan Rouhani. So the Biden team has really very few short weeks before they can uh, restart this diplomacy and figure out this choreography with the help of the EU. Uh, and I think the Europeans are very well positioned. They had, they wore this hat basically of coordination when the negotiations happened. They helped keep the nuclear deal alive under uh, President Trump. And now I think they have this very important role of, of helping both sides basically return to full compliance of the agreement. Uh, Negar, last year, I don't know if you recall, um, before the U.S. presidential election, Joe Biden said, uh, quote, there's a smarter way to be tough on Iran. What kind of approach will his administration take, you think? Well, I think it's, an, and I agree with this approach, that diplomacy and engagement is going to be the way for the U.S. to address issues that were... Um, that are bipartisan here in Washington. And some of them are actually issues that the European partners of the U.S. also care about, Iran's uh, missile program, Iran's regional presence, and some of the domestic policies and the human rights situation inside Iran. What we saw under the Trump administration is that all of these issues were of concern, but none of them were addressed. There was a policy of maximum pressure, sanctions after sanctions piled on Iran, but there was no path to an actual resolution or diplomacy as far as addressing any of these issues. We see the nuclear program has extended. We see Iran's regional presence is more aggressive. And the human rights situation in the country is actually much worse. So I think engagement and diplomacy would be the way forward. And it seems like that's what President Biden has said he wants to do and intends to do. And the team that he's setting up around himself when it comes to Iran also indicates that that's what he wants. Right, we'll keep a close eye on the story. Negar Mortazavi. In Washington, D.C., thank you for that report. We appreciate it.